Hello, in the last two examples, uh, we've been working towards building a shape file with a couple of features. Um, one is it narrows down all the crimes in Madison to just one day and, um, and tells us what percentage of the way we are through the day when the crime occurred. And then B, it's actually telling us the latitude and longitude, um, even though the original data only had addresses in it. Um, so the third part pulls it all together. We're going to make an animation that looks something like this. Let me play it. And uh, you can see that these um, crimes pop up as they go. And if you look closely, you're going to notice that um, they have different uh, levels of opacity or transparency. Right? You can see how they are transparent for a while. They kind of fade away. So we're gonna, uh, when we're making this animation, do that. It's a little bit stronger than having it just kind of pop on and then immediately disappear for one frame. OK, so let me head over here. Uh, to see the files we have from last time. Uh, previously, we built this build shape file, um, which builds uh, this file here, crime.shape, and then some others that accompany it. And the one of the key points from last time is that this shape file, this build shape file notebook, has to use Google's geocoding API. So every time we run that thing, uh, we have to pay Google a little bit of money, at least after we um, have made enough API calls. Right, so I separate that. I run it once, it's done. And then now going forward, I'm just going to run this one here where we're going to actually build an animation based on the shape file of that generated. Right? So that'll be a standard way you want to do things. The other thing that you should see here is that um, from the earlier examples uh, and, and previous lectures, I have the city and water zip files. And those are just zipped shape files I'm going to use to make uh, my final map. So. So looking back at this, for example, um, those red points are from the crime shape file. Uh, the gray is from the city shape file. And the blue is from the water shape file. So I'm starting over here with some code that I copied and pasted from the earlier example. And, uh, and this is just of that ball dropping. And uh, here, right, the main reason I was doing that is because I've done all this work about um, you know, frames per second and calling the right number of times. So I can easily adjust this without breaking anything. OK, so this will be my starting point. Um, but what I'm going to do, maybe here I'm just going to say, OK, let's debug from frame one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of this stuff. And um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to do is I want to <clears throat> um, move this off. right? I like to do all the uh, imports at the beginning. and. Uh, and then I need to pull in all of my data, right? So I'm going to have uh, my city data. It's going to be a GeoPandas. Oh, but I forgot to import GeoPandas, didn't I? Uh, import GeoPandas. And I'm going to say GeoPandas.read um, city.zip. <coughs> and um, oh, read file. Uh, read file city.zip. And then that failed, and this is just to remind you that uh, if I'm opening up a zip file, I have to tell it that I'm doing so, right? It's not going to be smart enough to figure it out by the extension. I have to say that the protocol I'm using is zip slash slash, right? So I'm going to do that. Let me just peek at this again so I can um, see what we had before. A shape file, I have my geometry, a bunch of shapely shapes. Great. And then, and then I wanted the water, right? Basically the lakes in Madison. And so water is geocandas.read file uh, zip, and then I have water.zip. And, and these were the same as the other lecture, right? How I had downloaded those. I do that. And then this last piece, <coughs> I want to read in uh, the crime.shp. Uh, right? And that's going to automatically pull in data from these other files, too. So I'll say crime equals geocandas.read file prime dot shape and let's take a look at that one because that's where the interesting stuff is really happening okay so if I wanted to right I can grab all these things that I just read in and as soon as I get this ax area I can plot in them right so maybe for now I'm just going to do nothing here and um, I'm just going to draw these things I'm going to say I'm going to plot the city uh, with color equals 0 0.85, AX equals AX. Uh, water, I need to plot that. I'm going to make that one a light blue. 
So that plot uh, color equals light blue, um, AX equals AX. And then, and then I need to do this one too. Um, this is the, oh, what am I doing? Dot plot. This is the one that I had generated myself, right? Based on, um, on the uh, data on the city of Madison website. And maybe for this one, I'll just say the color is going to be um, red and AX equals AX. Okay. And so I see the basic thing, right? I'm showing all the points all at once. Um, and that's fine. Maybe I'll make this just a little bit larger, like so. And um, and this is one frame, and, and and really it doesn't matter. I guess here I have how many frames, ten of them. Let me let me do this. I'm gonna say in the end there's gonna be twelve seconds, and then uh, two frames per second uh, would mean that I have um, each frame is one hour. Right? There's twenty four hours in the day. All right. So right now if I do that, and it doesn't really matter what frame I'm on. If I'm you know at noon or or 11 o'clock, right? It doesn't matter. Um, what I want to do is I want um, these points to come and go uh, after they occur. And, um, and the way I could do that is I can set an alpha, right? I can set an alpha like this, alpha equals, uh, you know, zero point. Uh, you know, if I set to one, it's they're totally on. If I set it to a zero, completely invisible, and then, you know, maybe 0.3, um, it's just kind of these ghosts of a shape, right? And, and so what I want it to do is I want them to either be invisible until they happen, and then after it happens, I want it to slowly fade. Now, what I wish I had is some ability to pass in a column of alphas, right? Then I could kind of compute it all at once, uh, but I can't do that. And this means that this is one of those cases where I want to draw all the markers myself and adjust the alphas individually, right? So I can't use this, right? Because this is not flexible enough to let me use different alphas. So, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to loop over all the rows. I'm going to say something like for um, index row and find dot iter rows. But let me just print this as a first step. Okay, I'm looping over all those things. And um, and, uh, and then what? I want to figure out how to draw each of these points, right? So I'm going to pull out the point. So the point is in the row. And um, right, if I look up geometry, I get to this point, right? So I'm going to say I want to get the geometry. And, uh, and then I somehow want to plot that thing, right? The way I can plot things is I can say, uh, I can say, I think it's ax.plot. Sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. Um, it is ax dot plot, and then I have to give it an x, a y, and um, and then like a style. And so for the x and y, that's just going to be pt dot x, and then pt dot y, and then the style. I guess I am just going to make it be a red dot. Right, so I'm going to do that, <clears throat> and I can see great. I'm where I was before. I'm just kind of drawing these all manually now instead of using the plot function, right? So I basically converted something like this to manually plotting the points. Okay, why would I want to do that? Um, well, the reason is that this is going to return a marker, right? So let me, let me grab that marker, you know, abbreviate it, and let me just print that thing. Okay, so it's returning all of these markers, which are basically um, a list of length one, right? There's only one piece to it. And so I can actually pull that out too. Right? I'm gonna just grab that out now. It's all of these things. These things, these line 2Ds, those are markers. And I can uh, change them as I go, right? So if I wanted to, right, I could say uh, marker.setAlpha. Um, I don't know, let's make it 0 0.3. And I see they're all very faint now. Okay, now I don't wanna do the set alpha down here. I want to set alpha based on where we are in the in the video, right? Set alpha here, right? Of these guys. And, and so what I need to do is I need to get two pieces of information. I need to figure out um, what my markers are and what percentage they're supposed to appear at, right? So I'm gonna actually create a list here of markers and uh, I'm gonna just make a note that this is a list of tuples where I have marker and then percent. <clears throat> this is what percentage of the day we're through. Um, it's going to correspond to what percentage 
um, of the video has been played, right? So when we have the marker percentage, right? Like maybe a marker percentage was 50%, meaning that this crime occurred at noon. And then when I'm drawing a frame, I can see if I'm before or after that. Okay, so here I can say markers, markers.append, <clears throat> and I want to append a tuple. Like I said, and the first piece is marker and second piece is percent. So marker, and, um, and then this piece, right? I want to, uh, um, what do I want to do here? Um, I want to grab something else from this row. Can I, can I just look up here quickly what I had before? Before I had the geometry, which I used to pull out my point and create the marker. And then I also had this percentage column, right? So I can, I can right here, I can grab out row of percent. Okay, and maybe let me, after I'm all done with this, let me just print that list. Print the markers. Okay, so, so you see what we're doing here, right? I have this nice list of markers and the point at which they're supposed to occur. So for example, this one is 18% of the way through the video. And so what I want to do is, well, before 18%, it should be transparent. I shouldn't see it. It should be invisible. After 18% of the way through the film, then the point occurs. Okay, so every time I'm here, I'm going to loop over my list of markers and update their transparency, whether or not they're visible. That alpha is the transparency. Okay, so, so here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say something like this. We're going to say uh, for, uh, I'm looping over this thing, right? So I guess I, I could say something like um, for a tuple and markers, right? And then this tuple will give me this piece, right? Both the, both the marker and the percentage. Uh, but not only make that my life easier is that I just immediately unpack that, right? So this tuple is going to contain a marker and a percent. Maybe I'll just try this marker percent. Let me let me just print these things, right? So I'm going to look, print the marker and the marker percent. Okay. So I can see I'm printing all of these things here. Let, let me. This is a little bit too much to be printed, right? Let me clean this up here. All right, so I drew all these points up here, right, with ax.plot. I, I made all the markers. I put them in this list. Here I'm looping over them. I need to figure out what their alpha should be. Okay, so I'm going to have some sort of alpha variable. Well, first I have to figure out what point in time we are. So if something alpha equals something uh, else, alpha equals something else, and then, so I'm going to create that variable, and then I'm going to use it to set my alpha, right, for each of these points, right? I'm going to set it to whatever I computed before, right? And, and, and so at least initially, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, uh, I, I'm going to say this part means it's already past, right? The event is already heard. This means it's in the future, right? So this is past, uh, and this is going to be future. So if it's future, I want it to be invisible. And if it's in the past, at least for now, let's say that it's completely visible, right? If it's in where we're going towards, right, is that if it's in the recent past, it's fully visible. If it's in the distant past, um, it's less so. Uh, but for now, we'll just hey, make the points appear and we won't worry about them uh, disappearing yet. Do make them disappear slowly. Okay. So how do I know if it's in the past? Well, I know what percentage I am through the movie, and I know what percentage, at what percentage point that marker should show up. Right, so really this is just saying is percent greater than my marker percent. If it is, then this marker appearing was in the past, right? That crime, you know, maybe the maybe the movie is up to like 3 p.m. and uh, and the crime occurred at 1 p.m. So I should have um, kind of full opacity. I should be able to see it. Okay, so let's run that thing. And, um, and, and I can see that most everything is on because it's here. But if I go back to early in the day, no crimes yet at 1 a.m. Uh, what, what about like at 9, 9 a.m.? A bunch of crimes there. Let's, let's check out 6 a.m., fewer, uh, 4 a.m., right, maybe 1. So I can see as time advances, we're going to draw more and more of these. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just see where we are with the video. 
no more debugging. I want to actually generate all of them. All right, so I'm going to generate 24 frames as we go through the day. All right, so let, let's let's run this. And uh, and then as usual, that takes a little bit of time. I can see as as the day goes on, more crimes appear. Right until I think then there's kind of a lull, and then I think late in the day again, there's more that pop up at the last minute. Okay, maybe I didn't, maybe I missed those. Okay, so we're doing pretty good, but we need to get the slow fade working, right? So how can I do a slow fade? Well, I guess what I really want to do is I want to figure out um, how much time has passed, right? So um, maybe I'm going to take a look at this elapsed time is going to be, so I know percentage is bigger than this, right? So this is now. So now, minus when the crime occurred, right? And, um, and and what I can do is I can actually divide that by something, right? So I think there's some amount of fade time, right? So maybe I may say that uh, I want to fade out over, I don't know, let, let's fade out over, um, you know, 10% of the video, right? So what does that mean? Well, I guess there's 12 seconds. So 10% of the video, a little bit over a second, it'll pop up and slowly fade over the next 1.2 um, seconds, right? So, so let me think a little bit about this. Uh, at the moment it occurs, right? So if we're current in the, in the frame where the marker pops up, uh, this will be zero, right? Because percent equals this, this is zero, um, but I want the point to be strongest and I want it to be one. Right, so so I guess what I really want here is that I want it to be one minus this thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So so that'll be good, right? So I can figure out this will slowly fade from one uh, to zero, and then, and then you know the last piece, right, is that eventually, if I'm fading from one to zero, right now this will eventually go negative, right? This, you know, maybe this will be point two, so. 0.2 over 0.1 is 2, so this thing can be negative, um, but you can't get more invisible than zero visibility. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I should say is something like this, max of that, um, zero. All right, maybe I'm just going to get rid of this at this point. Well, let, let me think about this. I had already computed this, hadn't I? This is the elapsed elapsed time. There we go. Let me clean that up a little bit. Um, I shouldn't copy and paste. Okay, so as time elapses, this gets smaller until it reaches zero. And at that point, since I say max of that or zero, it can't get any smaller. Right? So this, this value as time goes on is going to get smaller and smaller, which means it's slowly disappearing. So, so let, me, let me try running this and see if that's true. Um, and actually, let me it's a little hard to see what's going on here, right? Because, because um, it's kind of strangely shaped. So I'm gonna run that. And did I get it backwards? I really want it um, wider than it is tall. Um, excuse me. There we go. So I can see I'm getting this slow fade going, right? I can have that effect going. Let me let me play it again earlier when there's lots of things happening. And so. This is great, right? I actually kind of surprised we got it right on the first shot. Um, but once we do that, right, we can crank up the frames per second. Two frames per second is very low. Uh, let's see what it looks like when we make it, say, 20 frames per second. It'll still be a 12 second video. All right, that looks good. So I think we did it.